It's officially spooky season, which can mean only one thing, time for spooky fusions. Let's see how many horrifying, creepy, and downright frightening fusions we can find while beating Pokemon Infinite Fusion. Make sure you stick around because there are a ton of fusions in this run. For our rival's name, I went with something classic and named him Casper. We grabbed ourselves a Bulbasaur from Professor Oak, and then after defeating Casper's fusion starter, I headed home to grab our second starter from our mom. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Cosmic your mom doesn't give you a second starter. What are you talking about? Well, in this fusion run, she does. And it's a spooky Pokemon, too. Now, when you think of spooky Pokemon, you probably think of ghost types, which is what this run is primarily going to feature. Ghost types, dark types, and the occasional other type. So for our second starter, our mom gave us a Duskull. So we fused it with our Bulbasaur, and it made this adorable jack-o'-lantern little fella. Look at him. He's so cute, but spooky. Lesson number one one about spooky fusions, cute can still be spooky. Example A, I rest my case. With our run officially started, I took our little jack-o'-lantern pal trick-or-treating for some friends. We then fused his brother Duskull with this Entei and created this amazing fusion. Lesson number two about spooky fusions, not everything that's spooky is cute. On our way to the first gym, we managed to catch a bunch of other Pokemon like Ho-Pom, Venulicky, and oh, some others. And then we made our way out of the forest. Time for more fusions, cause that's why you're here. Gengar and Gengar looked insane, like it had come straight out of a Doom game. So much detail. Mr. Mime became this haunted puppet that's kind of looking at you funny. And Slowbro was just swallowed up by a Mega Gengar. This Tauros Gengar is crazy. Now I know we got a regional Tauros form in Paldea, but let's be honest. Pokemon, we want something like this fusion. Gengar and Venusaur made another pumpkin fusion, though a little more purple. And with that, we had our team. Brock was using ghost types this run since things are randomized, which was neither good or bad for us. The most adorable, precious, and bewitching Dusor managed to destroy his Raichu fusion with Hex, and then Genros managed to live a bite on one HP, winning the battle with Horn Attack. I mean, he's already a ghost, so what were you gonna do? Kill him again? Time to catch more Pokemon, like this dark puddle of veins, and a snake, also made out of veins. While we were battling trainers, Dusor evolved and he lost his pumpkin, which was unacceptable. Luckily, there was an alternate form that gave him back the squash on his backside, so we changed him to that. Fusing Steelix and Gengar together was insane. It was like both of their Megas combined. Look at that smile. He knows he's cool. Ursaring became one of the Pokemon versions of Five Nights at Freddy's and- Oh, oh great heavens! heavens. Wailord was literal perfection. He looked like an old school ghost from Ghostbusters. Oh. The colors, the mouth, it all screamed sinister. I absolutely love that so many of these spooky fusions look like video game bosses. Wait, did you say bosses? Yeah, what about it? Well, I was just playing Dungeon Hunter 6, which is the new installment of the classic hack and slash franchise. It has over 100 unique bosses and is adding more each month. That's right, Dungeon Hunter, who's today's video sponsor. In Dungeon Hunter 6, you not only get to defeat tons of crazy and unique bosses, but you also get to summon them to fight alongside you and even shapeshift into them later in game. Dungeon Hunter 6 takes its 3D graphics and performance super seriously. Yeah, these skill animations look spectacular, especially on my mobile device. Right now I'm in a guild war with some friends trying out a new build that I made. I also was able to trade some items through their auction system. I love how customizable this is. Download the game now for free by clicking the link in the description or clicking on the QR code on screen if you're watching on PC or TV devices. By doing this, you'll receive a special starter pack worth $50, which includes 10 summoning scrolls, the SSR Lieutenant Demonic Wolf, and an accessory pack. You can also use your game account to enter in the Launch Lucky Spin event for free for a chance to win an iPhone 15 Pro Max, a PS5, and more. This is all starting October 15th, so check out the details down in the description. Make sure to check it out, guys. Again, link in the description or QR code on screen and thank you again, Dungeon Hunter 6, for sponsoring this video. Diglett and Cubone wasn't necessarily spooky, unless you consider Diglett out of the ground with his little feet scary, which is understandable. What was definitely frightening was Cutler, the no-nose reindeer. See what I did there? Reindeer, red, no. 
This corrupt Venusaur looked awesome, and Rattata became the ghost of Mickey Mouse? And its reverse was actually kind of sad. I like this Lickitung fusion, especially with the flaming eyes, but I just couldn't resist keeping the reverse fusion, this tongue coming from a dimensional portal. Continuing on, we battled some trainers, found some Pokemon like Shandalax and this uh, Haxorus Charizard fusion, and disrupted Team Rocket's plans in Mount Moon. We then arrived at Cerulean City to check challenge Misty, the rock-type gym leader. Cutler was easily taking on her lair on until it was roared out into Genlord who finished it off. We were then roared back into Cutler before defeating her with Bone Club. An easy win. Casper wanted to challenge us once again, and his Clefbeam went down quickly to our skeletal Entei. Genlord then made quick work of his Squirt Melion? Squirt Melion. Well, I guess it could be Squirt Me- Mobby fell to Nightshade, and then his own spooky fusion, Porytops, came in. Our seasonal Tauros then was able to finish it off with Horn Attack. Time for more Pokemon to catch. Which, while we're catching Pokemon, by the way, can you imagine a child, 10 years old, going out and taming the most wild and dangerous beasts on this earth, and then using them to fight for them? The Pokemon world is insane. Anyways, on the SSN, Casper wanted to battle us again for some reason, so we sent in our Reindeer of Death to stop his flittle. We then headbutted his Lady Turtle, and Genlord once again came out to barely survive a dragon dance from his Feraligator fusion. And then the Daedric Tongue finished off his starter once again, winning against our not-so-friendly rival, Casper. Surge was using Dragon-type Pokemon, but I wasn't worried. Dute used Sacred Fire to finish off his goofy-looking Bulbasaur fusion, and after snagging a burn on this Shinx Curum, it fainted with us. Bulbagon then quickly fell to our Pumpkin Man's Hex, and we had our third gym badge. Time for more fusions. Dusclops and Steelix was crazy. Look at that giant eyeball and the ghostly crystals. You know I had to add this to the team. This Alakazam mummy fusion was also pretty cool. And I love this ghost type evolution. Marowak Duck Trio became an army of disturbing bone diglets. And Gengar made Marowak a bone reaper. Wait, is, is he saying something? He says he saw that you haven't subscribed yet? How are we supposed to hit 100,000 so that we can evolve Gallopup, our channel's mascot. Hit the subscribe button! Gengar and Duskull made a Mega Skull, which, if this isn't spooky, I don't know what is. Duskull ho -Oh became this nightmarish skeletal bird, and Haxorus looked like it'd been through some things. Scary things. Pinsir and Spiritomb became this nightmare of a portal filled with teeth, and Blastoise looked like some ancient possessed statue, which I loved. Our new team is looking terrifying. As I traverse through the next cave, I found this nightmare fuel, so I caught it. We then made our way to Lavender Town and the Pokemon Tower to show Casper our new and frightening team. His Blissey Fusion and her seven health bars took forever to knock out, but eventually Confusion and Burn was able to finish it off. Kek2 didn't have anything for the all-seeing Steelix and was eventually defeated. Polylet fell to Ominous Wind and Wormelion fell to Water Pulse, winning the battle. He didn't seem very impressed with our team. In Celadon City, we cleared out the sewers full of Rocket Goons and had our first difficult fight, Giovanni. Giovanni's assassin primate managed to take out our Ho-Oh fusion. Our Haxorus managed to then survive an assurance on 3 HP, then managed to get off a Will-O-Wisp. Spiritoise knocked it out with Water Pulse, and suddenly a fuzzy Rampardos fusion came in. This guy came in and knocked out our Dustlix, our Haxorus, and then Genlord, and managed to bring our Bone Reaper down to 2 HP before finally fainting to its burn. Luckily, Sandicott, Giovanni, Giovanni's final Pokemon wasn't too hard, and with that, it was time for Gym 4. After fighting off a buff Farfetch'd and a group of muscular Doug Trios, I concluded that the gym was a fighting type gym. Ho-Oh finished off her Pucolade, and Haxorus demolished this Electabuzz fusion with Dragon Claw. Her final Pokemon, Mamchamp, was worrisome as it knocked out Ho-Oh, but luckily it couldn't touch Genlord for some reason, and with a few brines, we had won, which meant more fusions. Houndoom and Celebi became this evil pick and Pseudo Wudo turned Houndoom into a phantom guide. I love fusions that have these little sprites in it, especially two of my favorite ghost types. Dusk Noir and Whale Lord was freaky. I mean, look at all those eyes. And Rapid Ash became a headless horseman. Charizard and Dusk Noir had these cool, purpley, fiery bits, and it was pretty strong, so I added it to the team. Chandelier made some insane fusions, like this Entei made out of flaming glass, and Gardevoir in a Halloween costume. Finally, Vaporeon looked possessed 
possessed and spooktacular. On our way to Fuchsia City, I found a skeleton Aerodactyl and then headed straight to the fighting type gym. And yes, Koga is a fighting type gym this time. I got it right. Duskzard defeated his first Pokemon with Air Slash, and then Chandion finished off his Dragocross with Muddy Water. Koga's Blaziken Garchomp Fusion then managed to knock out our Vaporeon and Haxorus Fusion with one shot, but luckily Duslix was bulky enough that it was able to take revenge. His final Pokemon was a Slacking Machamp Fusion that would have normally been hard, but it had nothing to hit us, so we were able to defeat it and move on to more fusions. Like this Dusclops and Torterra, now with a spooky church instead of a tree. Arcanine looked crazy with its red spirit fire mane, and Miss Magius created some goofy fusions like Blastoise and his mystery potions. Mr. Mime became a reference, which I know what this is, but I can't remember it. Comment down below what this is. Torterra, of course, won my heart again with these little baby ghost sprites. Sylphco went smoothly as we battled some grunts in their own spectral fusion. Rescued some people because lesson number three about spooky fusions, it doesn't mean we're evil. We gave Casper the workaround and then took on Giovanni and his double Pichu fusions. Would this be considered child labor? I mean, it's two baby Pokemon. Anyways, we defeated the crime leader and headed straight for the next gym. Sabrina's ice type stood no chance against my frightening team. Duskzard took out her Sneasel with Ember, and then our mummified Arcanine finished off her Dubok with extreme speed. Our Evolution decimated the Mudsole with Flame Burst before doing the same to her final Sneasel fusion, swiftly winning another gym badge. Time for more fusions. I told you, there's a lot of them and a lot to come, so don't go anywhere. Duskull turned Gardevoir into a Necromancer that summoned little Raltzes to battle. Super cute and creative. Miss Magius fused with Bisharp to make this wicked witch knight. But you know what's even cooler? This menace of a fusion. I'd imagine this is what it looks like when Miss Magius takes over the shell of an old Bisharp. Dusclops and Houndoom made an Among Us, but spooky? I'm not sure what happened here, but Muck and Kofagrigus is not the type of Pokemon that I would want to run into, or catch for that matter. Machamp, on the other hand, became this buff, Pharaoh. Spooky and cool. Blaine's bug types didn't put up much of a fight as Dusk Nine and Dusk Zard burned through him with Flamethrower. Then the Phantom Menace that was our Miss Masharp finished off his final Pokemon with Night Slash. Now our haunted band of frights and freaks had done pretty well so far, but I was curious how they were going to fare against Zap Mulkuno. This triple fusion with its three health bars and getting to attack three times every turn could cause a lot of issues. It's definitely spooky in its own kind of overpowered way. As we dove into the battle, Duskzard quickly managed to take out Articuno with a flamethrower before fainting. Great start. Mishmasharp then missed an attack and fainted immediately. Not so great. Coffachamp only managed to bring Moltres down to half with Shadow Ball before fainting. Luckily, Shandion managed to land a massive muddy water on both of them and was able to knock out the Moltres, leaving Zapdos at two-thirds health. It then managed to confuse it before fainting. With Zapdos Zapdos now alone and confused, our Dust Nine managed to finish it off, bringing us one step closer to more fusions. You thought I was gonna say becoming champion. Well, that's not what this run is about. It's about spooky fusions. Giovanni's flying types were kind of a joke, though he led with one of my favorite fusions of all time, Blaze Gia. Pseudo Doom used Stone Edge to tear through his first three Pokemon, then Shandion came in to clean up with muddy water. I guess cleaning up with muddy water, they wouldn't leave it very clean. His final two Pokemon fell, meaning it was time for the Elite Four, after more fusions, of course. Cofagrigus and Feraligatr's fusion was phenomenal as it became a haunted pharaoh. Dusk Noir and Tentacruel would have definitely definitely kept you up at night, though I ended up keeping Dusk Noir and Lantern because of how strong this fusion was, and look at all those teeth. Octillery and Spiritomb made this. I'm really not sure what this is, but the reverse was a Cthulhu monster coming out of an Octillery statue, which is definitely frightening. Gyarados Spiritomb looked angry, and while Gengar Tyranitar was pretty cool, though I don't really get the snakes coming out of it, this Zoroark Gengar was a menace, so we decided to keep that one. Our final battle 
battle with Casper was kind of a washout, though he did have this scary fusion with a scary name. Ugh. Finances. But we beat him without any issue, and made our way all the way to the Elite Four, which meant, yeah, more fusions. Houndoom made Weezing look like one of those floating skulls from Legend of Zelda, and Deoxys became a half-demon, half-alien monster. Those arms don't look very useful anymore. Though the Aegislash fusion was amazing, with its flaming eyes, the skull head, and even barbed wire. Now this is spooky. Dusk Noir Spiritoon became a sleep paralysis demon, and Houndoom made Dusk Noir look kinda goofy, but still spooky. I think it's the arm to head ratio that's a little funny. Deoxys made some sort of mannequin monster and Darkrai just became a grim reaper. Now I am not willing to hear any of you out about Mimikyu and Lopunny, but this fusion is amazing. I absolutely love the puppet vibes. Duskull made Giratina even more evil and Lugia looked a little decomposed. We finally got to see our starter fully evolved in all its jack-o'-lantern glory and Chandelure made Scyther look like it was made of molten glass. Do you guys consider these types of fusions spooky? I kinda do. Pinsir makes everything a horror fusion with its teeth, like Blastoise and the reverse. And of course, we can't do Halloween spooky fusions without the three best witch fusions. Jolteon, Flareon, amazing. And then my favorite of the three, Leafeon. Such good designs. Dusclops and Aegislash made a cool wrapped up sword, and Mimikyu and Vaporeon created a Vaporeon puppet. It. And no, I don't want to know about Vaporeon. Anyways, here's my final team. There are just so many good fusions to choose from in this run, so I went with kind of a mix. Some of my favorite designs, but also some of the strongest fusions from the run. Let me know what your guys' favorite fusions have been so far, and what the scariest has been so far. Since this is a run about the coolest and spookiest fusions, and not as much about the battles and becoming champion, we're just gonna show a few of the coolest fusions from the Elite Four. Like Bruno's Deoxys Gardevoir. You guys know I'm a sucker for anything cosmic, and this thing is amazing. Agatha also had this cool Porygon fusion that looked like a Friday Night Funkin' character. He'd probably drop a sick beat. And yeah, that's pretty much all that was cool, unless you consider a Pikachu face Dusk Noir cool, but unfortunately that was about it until the final battle. Casper led Slarill, which would have been a huge problem if our Pumpkin King didn't have Will-O-Wisp. This saved us from a potentially huge power slash lacking fusion. It eventually fainted to Petal Blizzard. Casper sent out his finely evolved starter and used Inferno to knock out Dusor. This fusion also managed to knock out Lanoir, as well as Miss Misharp, likely due to the fact that they were 10 levels ahead of us. Luckily, Mimiuni was able to finish it off with Shadow Claw, as well as Hypefish. Kinda sounds like a rap name. But unfortunately, we were knocked out by Korogron. Our Glass Scyther managed to knock it out with Bug Buzz, as well as his second to last Pokemon. This guy was definitely not there to battle. He just wanted a hug. Finally, our last Pokemon looked like it would be defeated by Furcruel because he was using me first. But then I remembered we have Flash Fire and Flamethrower. This allowed us to use Flamethrower safely and we won the battle. I absolutely loved the fusions from this run and I love the season in general. So let me know what you guys thought of this video. Did you like it better than the normal showing all the fights and focusing on that or do you like focusing on the fusions more? Let me know in the comments and again let me know your favorite fusions and let's get to a hundred thousand this year you guys are awesome and until next time peace